Hey guys, welcome back for another episode. Um, in this episode, we are tiling a two showers. Um, this one is a this one has a tub, um, a little bit higher than normal ceilings. I think maybe around nine and a half or ten foot. Um, using a probably about a six by two and a half or three inch um, subway tile and uh, it's not a normal subway tile it's it's uh, kind of like a three-dimensional tile so it's got a slightly beveled um, edge on it really nice looks really good when it's grouted in um, so to begin with um, normally when I do showers I like to uh, waterproof membrane everything uh, several coats um, just so I know you're gonna get every bit of 20 years every bit of 20 years out of it um, actually you could probably get much longer um, and uh, it wouldn't hurt the uh, extra water protection is uh, always always better than not um, so I was kind of following someone else's direction on this and um, they really weren't too concerned with the waterproof and membrane so um, I kind of just had to do things their way. Um, right now the tub is uh, masked off with tape and plastic. Um, it's a pretty nice uh, porcelain tub. It's not high end or anything, but um, it's always nice to keep your brand new stuff um, clean and, and not damaged. Um, so with this, um, I'm using... I forget the brand of thin set that I'm using, but um, I do recommend that you buy the high end stuff. Um, I've tried using the cheaper thin set, and um, it's always it, it's just harder to work with, and and the money you save isn't real great. And um, honestly, the the bonds that you get on it aren't really great unless you back butter. Um, with this stuff as long as it's fresh. Um, I find that I don't have to back butter it as much um, but if you if you put up a, a lot at one time and you're kind of getting towards the end of um, of You know, you're pushing the time wise of whether or not you're gonna keep going or scrape it off um, if you begin to back butter towards the um, Drier um, Once it then set starts you know getting a little bit dry if you back butter it um, it does work good but it's always better to just if you if you're questioning whether or not your thin set is still good to go um, just scrape it off and mix up some more um, so with this um, my process I like to do a ledger board um, on the first row and what I do is I take measurements around the tub and I go slightly less than one tile thickness, so that way um, I'll have a um, all my bottom pieces will be a cut tile, um, and that way I can get the perfect um, reveal for the joints, and it will um, everything will um, have the correct spacing by the time you get down to the tub if there's any discrepancies in the levelness of the tub and and whatnot. So um, to begin with I did float the walls just a little bit with a uh, thin set. Um, I just put a level on the walls and um, there were a couple high spots and low spots so uh, I just floated that out. And uh, as far as the tile size goes um, obviously you're going to be setting a lot more tile if you're using small tiles like these um, however you do get a very distinct um, look you know it's it's um, it's a subway tile and or at least it's, it's set like subway tile and um, 
you know, you get a nice kind of brick pattern and um, also you, you can't see it too well. You can see a little bit on the video, but um, these are nice uh, kind of three dimensional subway tile. So um, really once you see it in person that it can be appreciated. Um, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to do some of these showers with a bigger tile. I mean, uh, I think I probably went through, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 boxes of these things to um, complete both both uh, showers. So, Hey guys, and uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button for new updates on new videos, and um, if you got a comment, leave it down below. Uh, if you have questions, leave it down below. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, I forgot to mention, um, these ones, these uh, tiles here have a built-in spacer in them, um, which I do prefer. Uh, there, were, there were a couple instances that I had to uh, shave a couple of those to kind of straighten out a row. Um, I don't know if it was just a discrepancy in the size of the tile or the size of the spacer, but every now and then I did have a, a row that would go slightly crooked, and I had to correct that by um, shaving down some of the spacers that are built into the tiles. But I will say um, I've done two showers almost the same size as these and um, they didn't have the spacers built into them and it was a real nightmare and and with these spacers built in it probably saved me probably over 50 percent um cut down on time of putting in the spacers so um make sure if you're going to do something like this make sure you get tile that's got built-in spacers if the if the tile are small like these or, I mean, you're literally going to be setting hundreds and hundreds of spacers, and it's it's just not worth it. Um, get the tile with the spacers built in. So uh, down here, um, just doing some custom cuts on the tiles. Um, if you've ever tiled around a bathtub, you'll find that when that um, rounded outside edge piece goes down to the floor, um, it, it does so at a slight angle, maybe like one or two degrees. Um, so if you want a eighth inch reveal or a quarter inch reveal or whatever your reveal is going to be, you're going to have to do a custom, um, slightly, slightly beveled, not, be, well, not beveled, but slightly angled cut on your pieces to get them to fit right. So keep that in mind. And, um, the gap, uh, usually around anywhere around the bottom of the tub all the way down. Um, I, I use, um, silicone for that. And, um, in this case I use white silicone because the grout was going to be white. So that will give you a little bit of extra protection for waterproofing. This idiot just blocked the camera. All right, so um, to finish this off, um, I did a vertical um, row of these tiles and then 
there is a um, uh, just a little trim piece it's just a rounded over um, kind of trim piece of tile um, just to do finish that edge um, there's many different ways you can finish the edge you can do um, you can get a metal kind of schluter strip to finish the edge or you can um, you can probably even finish it with with just that vertical row of tile and um, you can just use some tape and mask it off and and grout that joint and kind of run your finger down it so it has a nice um, beveled finish edge for that um, you could use you could probably even finish it with um, some nice decorative uh, thin piece of PVC trim um, many different ways you can finish it um, kind of just depends on the look you're going for and what your preference is um, so this one here is the um, main shower that I started with um, I kind of did the side two walls and um, forgot to get the footage for that um, but basically it's the same concept with the um, bathtub surround um, I just start off with the ledger board and um, for this one here I started uh, several rows up and because we still had to get the um, we had to do the curb um, and so I left the the two bottom rows out so I could get the curb in and then I could set the tile and you'll see in the video later how I take care of that. So in this shower, um, the same material we use for the uh, shower curb on top is also being used for the uh, shelves in the corners. And um, that's kind of a nice technique to use instead of um, putting in a niche because, um, you know, you have to cut into the wall to get that, um, get that, um, get that niche in there. Um, and so this is kind of a nice little workaround. Um, and, and, and I think with six shelves total, you're probably, you're probably pretty close to, uh, a, a, an average niche or even, uh, maybe a slightly larger niche in, as far as shelf space. So I think that would be plenty enough. Um, but it's always nice to have a, um, a niche, um, and you know, there's several, ways you could go about it and um, finish it and nowadays they're even doing ones with the LED lights in them and stuff so they're pretty cool um, but uh, again you know I would have waterproofed the whole thing to the ceiling with red guard and um, a lot of things I would have done differently but kind of following someone else's direction on here so I, I had to do things their way um, But uh, I've been interested in doing an epoxy paneled shower. Um, I do quite a few countertops and stuff like that. And um, I think uh, we have probably be doing one here pretty soon. So to sh uh, set the shelves, um, you want to make sure you get a slight slope back towards the shower so that way your water doesn't want to run towards the wall. And um, so what I did is I set my slope and um, marked it with my pencil and uh, just use a couple long finish nails. And um, once you get to the 
point where you want to tile those, those in, you're going to want to plug the holes with a little bit of silicone or something uh, waterproof uh, just to make sure the water doesn't flow back there freely. Um, and you may have noticed that I did I did um, on the right side of the screen where the shower faucets or um, shower valves are um, I should have marked my holes to where the the shower valve assembly goes um, you have uh, you typically you have two two holes um, for screws that you want to leave out and um, I did have to go back and drill a couple holes for those but um, it's easier if you just cut them out when you put them in so that way you don't have to try and figure out where they are So um, using these herringbone um, pattern floor tile uh, mosaic, uh, first time I've ever used these, and I will say it wasn't, I mean, they look nice, and um, you can tell they're high quality, but there were a few discrepancies, and the, uh, you know, just not a, not a lot, you know, just a couple small discrepancies where the tiles weren't evenly spaced and um, it did make it very difficult to um, to set um, and if I were smarter I would have uh, cut my far edge to my left I would have cut that um, on the saw so that way that could sit flush up against the wall and I probably would have cut my my row to the right where I'm setting right next to the wall and then that way I wouldn't have had to go back and fill in at least those two areas um, probably just would have had to fill in actually I'm not sure I think if you do it right you may not have to fill in any of those small pieces um, but it was my first time using this kind of mosaic um, so if you'll notice um, at the far top right edge uh, what I did is I scribed a line of my tile um, just to make sure I set it back uh, in the same spot that I that I had it initially um, just to make sure I wasn't going to run into any issues and so when I laid down my thin set I made sure that I didn't cover up all my lines um, so you can see the thin set is kind of laid um, at a triangle kind of on that top right edge um, just to make sure that I was following my same layout marks and patterns so that way uh, I didn't run into any issues.
Hey guys, and if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that'll help me out a lot. And that'll keep you updated for future videos. And um, that pretty much does it for this one. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, see you soon on the next video.